So ladies, gentlemen of the DCU out there, today's video is going to be a pretty interesting one because I asked you on my community tab, what is the biggest thing you absolutely need, like your, your must have for James Gunn to incorporate into his upcoming DCU. So I've got a bunch of replies. I think I received way more replies than I normally get on my DCU discussion series videos. Now I guess you could look at this video in a discussion series-esque sense, but it's going to be solely you know, centered around what you guys replied with your biggest wants, like your absolute must-haves. If you could look into the future of the DCU and you could choose and pick a few things, what is it? Like your number one, number two, number three. So I have taken so many screenshots. I don't know how many I'm going to get through, but that's kind of a good thing. So I can do a few more videos to hopefully get more of your comments uh, in future videos. But some of your responses are super interesting. So I'm just going to go through your biggest ones and just give my take on it. And we'll see where this goes. Hit the like button. That greatly helps me out. And um, yeah, maybe subscribe for more videos like this. But I'm just super intrigued to see what is at the top of your DCU wish lists. So, I mean, starting off with user PP for X, W, 9, Y, R, H, 8, H. Now, can we please talk about the Suicide Squad game? Now, from Loser Liam2362 uh, saying, I need to see Justice League International as a TV show. I want a good cast of characters in a half drama, half sitcom. Like, I want to see them just chilling and living their daily lives. I, I want to see superheroes as real people with real problems. Now, as for Justice League International, I do understand that desire. I mean, I see mixed opinions on the Justice League International. People are like, oh, I don't know about that. Oh, no, actually, I'd rather them go this direction than the Justice League International. Now, I, I don't know what it is, but I think I have a good feeling that we are going to get some form of the Justice League International team up, if you will, in the DCU, or at least in some of a prototype phase. This is the thing. It has been hinted before by James Gunn, I think even funnily enough, on his Instagram story, not that this means too much but as of when recording this video he showed this on his instagram and another reason is of course with the casting of his brother sean gunn as maxwell lord the fact that we're getting a booster gold tv show it makes you think that you know maybe let's just say i don't know from the top of my head here booster gold surrounds obviously him traveling back into our time present day and maxwell lord perhaps introduces him to the present day earth and maybe from there on out he's introduced to the other heroes of the justice League International. Now, I don't know if they would already be a thing or if they're kind of set up at the time, and Maxwell Lord is involved in that, as he somewhat is in the comics, and he goes along a journey in where he's somewhat, I guess, humbled into being a better hero and part of the Justice League International. I mean, I guess you guys know what Booster Gold is like, but the kind of development he can go on, which is definitely an understandable reason as to why I think James Gunn chose a character like that, because he's quite good at, I guess, starting characters from point A, especially where Booster Gold is at. I'm not saying he has to be a jackass, but then developing along the way. And along with that, you can, yes, incorporate other characters that may very well already be in the DCU by that point, such as Mr. Terrific, of course, um, Batman. I don't know if we're going to get like a fully established Justice League International. And, and what I mean by that is... As I always say, even though James Gunn does seem to be, with everything he said, going very comic book accurate, it's still not copy and paste. This is still an adaptation, so I do expect some pieces to be moved on the board a little bit. Now, as for an actual Justice League International show, I mean, never say never. I mean, I don't know if we would actually get like a half drama, half sitcom thing, but I do see what you're saying there. Like on paper, I don't know if people would disagree with that, but you can imagine given that, as I always keep saying, to really paint the big picture here, out of the 12 projects that we've had revealed so far, including Peacemaker Season 2 and the DCU Arkham series, Gunn said that's less than half of what is still yet to be announced to even, you know, finish off the announcements for Chapter 1, let alone all the <laughs> announcements we're going to get in Chapter 2. So I do see Justice League International being a project that could be announced 
as one of the latter uh, multiple projects for DCU Chapter 1. I do expect if we were to get anything like this, a Justice League International recognized show or movie, it, it would be after Brave and the Bold. Um, so yeah, I, I could imagine, I could imagine that happening. Something like this, I think, you know, if I had like a little sensor that was like going bleep, bleep, and, and the, the closer you get to it, it bleeps faster. I feel like it is bleeping faster in the direction of the Justice League International team members, Sean Gunn being Maxwell Lord, uh, James Gunn saying Maxwell Lord being called a straight up villain is quite reductionist. Same thing he or similar thing he said about the engineer. They're not straight up villains or anything like that. So let me know if you agree or disagree. Do you think that we could see a TV show? And as pointed out by Liam here, I do feel like in the Justice League International version, you could kind of get, as, as he pointed out, to the real drama, like episodic aspect of it. But also, there, there will be some funny moments, but through the lens of this show, even if you just want to make it a limited series, maybe similar episodes to that of Peacemaker, not surpassing eight episodes, you could get into the daily lives of these superheroes, and that could that could really offer some interesting things that you don't really quite see before. Like, I don't think we've seen that properly done. I mean, we've seen, like... Marvel Disney Plus shows, but there's never been like, hey, like Avengers the TV show. And this wouldn't be Justice League per se, but you know, I I can I could believe that they would have Batman appear, but maybe he wouldn't be there all the time. But yeah, let me know what you guys think of that. I could ramble about this one forever, but long story long here, I think Justice League International is happening in some way or another. So up next from another user dash CF2IC9EX9Q. Whatever that means. Um, I want Nightwing to be important in the DCU like he is in the actual comics and finally get the recognition he deserves. Um, I'm going to keep this one short and brief because I think I've got a lot of things like a, lo a lot of comments like this to go through. But I 100% agree. And I say short and brief because I think something Nightwing is happening. I think Gunn is very aware of it. I'm pretty damn sure. But, you know, God, he's tweeted so many times at this point or gone on threads. But my point is he's, he's definitely insinuated something Nightwing-esque throughout time. But... I think you're not going to get that really until The Brave and the Bold. There will be absolutely some kind of Nightwing spinoff, whether it's his own project or whether that's got to fracture into a Titans project. So uh, maybe a Nightwing solo, then the Titans is founded in its own separate project, or you just have Nightwing himself. Uh, helming as the main star and role of the Titans. But maybe some people actually wouldn't like that because they want all the Titans members to be equal. But no matter what, you know, again, I could go right down that rabbit hole for ages. Nightwing, I think, will get the recognition um, that people want him to have in the DCU. And uh, I'm not saying Batman Brave and the Bold is being done just so it can set up these other Bat Family projects. No, not at all. But it is, like, kind of low-key. Uh, one of the advantages of, you know, I think, similar to The Son of Batman, I don't think Nightwing's going to go crazy in the live-action Brave and the Bold, but I do think he will be in it. Um, and they're just going to have to be really careful about how they craft the screen time of other Bat Family members. But absolutely. So one MWA Watak, I don't know. I, why does everyone have such uh, hard to pronounce names? <laughs> I need the first five projects uh, to at least follow the plan. Regardless the critical or commercial reception, we've had too much reactive meddling. Trust the process and see where it takes us. I absolutely wholeheartedly agree with this one for like a, a top desire here i mean i understand like the the desires or some of your top desires for like i need nightwing i need this but like i do understand how this one's a very important one as well because if there's one thing that we we have seen in studios putting out franchises um and and you can't always 100 percent blame them but being so reactionary from the higher ups like the executives like they were with the snyderverse you get a bit of whiplash as dc fans or whatever fandom you're in you're like okay so you're going along this oh wait all of a sudden we've got like justice league and birds of prey and you know i'm not, not like hating on birds of prey or anything but i'm just saying the tone not that I'm saying you shouldn't have tonally different movies because that's one thing the DCU is very much so doing, but the plan, the plan was very much so going one way and then it went another. I think this really applies to the DCU, namely because, and I've said this before, Superman Legacy might not do as well as it should do. And I think if David Zaslav has half a brain and James Gunn, they're already somewhat prepared for that. Now, some of you may be like, Boba, are you just like coping in advance because what if Superman Legacy does bad? You're just saying this. No, I'm really not. Like, even if Superman is really well received critically and by the audience, 
I still think that there might be a certain somewhat cooldown effect happening, even with the general audience, where if it doesn't make as much as it should in the box office, let's just hypothetically assume it still gets praised, but the box office isn't getting, hey, like this movie's like everyone seems to love it. Why isn't it? Why didn't it make more money? Was it the marketing? Was it this? Were people just not interested, even though it was like a really good movie? That, that's happened countless times. But at least with DC, you can kind of maybe blame the past a little bit for this somewhat fatigued idea of do I really want to go see James Gunn's Superman? I can go down that rabbit hole forever, but just to kind of pause my Myself. You have to be prepared for that. But in the maybe news of your box office, Mr. Zuslov and Warner Brothers Discovery here, let's just say it doesn't even reach $750 million and it's somewhere in the $600 million range. And you, you expect the rebooted Superman to at least make, you know, the Batman part one money, which is like around $770 million. I don't think they should panic. Do not panic. Stick to the plan because I think this is what is being expressed here. You know, if if, if it doesn't make the money, are they going to pivot? Are they going to be like James Gunn? Or David Zaslav might be like, James Gunn, I don't know if you should now follow through with Supergirl Woman of Tomorrow. They didn't like Superman, so or don't do the authority either. Maybe just go straight to Lanterns or whatever it is. And I understand that concern because it has been done before. But I think they are going to stick to the plan no matter what and just reevaluate um, a few projects in. So I think we're going to get Superman Legacy, obviously Creature Commandos. I think we're going to get... It depends now what movies is first because Gunn has admitted recently uh, in my recent news roundup that I covered that some projects are coming a bit sooner, some are now a, a little bit later. So let's just say Supergirl Woman of Tomorrow comes out, Peacemaker Season 2, maybe The Authority. I think then and only then they should reevaluate. Kind of look at the line graph, see how it's gone since Superman Legacy. Don't pull the plug too early and just be like, oh my God, what do we do? And then you're basically destined to like doom your own universe if you are once again reactionary. You need to stick to it, stick to your guns, <laughs> no pun intended there, and just um, hope that through making good products, even if not received greatly in the box office, that people will hear through word of mouth and hear after it's gone to Blu-ray, oh damn, I actually finally decided to check out Superman Legacy on Blu-ray, even though I didn't buy a cinema ticket, and I was wrong. I really liked that. Oh, wait, I've seen I've seen Supergirl Woman of Tomorrow now, or The Authority. I really liked it. And then eventually, you will get people to subscribe. I just think it would take a, a while. And on the bottom line, I don't think anyone is being, and, and they shouldn't be at DC Studios or Warner Brothers Discovery, ignorant to the fact that they've got some proving to do no matter what. So with knowing that you've got to prove your worth, you need to know that some people won't even turn up in the first place and they still need to somehow be won over if they don't even turn up. And that happens with the echo effect of the success for those who did kind of originally see what you had to show and people saying, oh no, trust me, bro, the DCU is cooking. And then more and more people will come on board. But no matter what, initially they need to hold the line for a good couple or three years, so to speak, um, or more, maybe four years, and then and then reevaluate. But let me know what you guys think of that. So from I needed some kind of name says, I want to see Wonder Woman uh, be kind and compassionate. I'm worried they're going to make her aggressive and all about her warrior side, like some comics and shows tend to make her. I also hope we get a Green Arrow project. So absolutely with the Green Arrow project, there's a lot of you who really want that as some of your top wants for the DCU. Right with me. Um, now, Wonder Woman. I, I wanted to entertain this one quite a bit because I do have a feeling that Gunn will kind of go this direction. I think he's teased recently, like, I like both. When being literally asked, hey, do you like this version or that version? He says, I like both. And then he teased on Wonder Woman Day, the kind of more God of War Wonder Woman. And now I think as a result, people are somewhat bracing themselves for that. And if you're like wondering why why are you saying people are bracing themselves do they not like her with a sword and shield and doing this that and the other and acting like a warrior um believe it or not it is quite controversial and i think it really depends on the story and not really so much that she she is afraid of using a sword and shield it's just normally that would be her last resort i mean if somebody's about to kill her and her people and she's tried everything else then yeah of course she would use those methods and be a badass warrior. I think people just don't want her to go in as I needed some kind of name says without compassion and not being aggressive right out the gate. And I don't think, I think people need to kind of, um, and I'm not saying you here, but like in the general fear, people need to kind of calm down in the speculation there, I think. Now, what I mean by that is, and you may call me crazy for having this level of trust, but I, I just, I, I can't imagine he's that out of touch. 
when Wonder Woman does get brought in, and of course, like, someone else will be directing it, but Gunn will have the kind of tapestry that, you know, the writers and directors need to adhere to. I can't imagine he's going to have Wonder Woman go into a situation of saving people and massacring people. I mean, I mean, kind of <laughs> Zack Snyder did this, I suppose, in the sense that when he when she saved those children, she threw like people up against the bank wall or whatever it was or the school. I can't remember where it was, but she just straight up yeeted people away and, uh, and there was a lot of blood spatter and whatnot. Um, so in the DC, what I'm trying to articulate is she won't go in with a sword and shield and like be like, you know, impaling people with a sword and then beheading them. And then asking questions later. I don't think that's what's going to happen. What I think is going to happen is Gunn is probably going to make the new Wonder Woman portrayed. Like, so I really like the Wonder Woman suit, by the way, that Gal Gadot had. But um, I think she's going to have a very warrior looking suit. It's going to be not too armored, but I think it will be more on the kind of, I don't think God of War-esque, Ares-esque Wonder Woman. So I, I don't think she's going to have a helmet per se in that sense. But I think she's going to be very, like, beastly warrior looking in the coolest way that both sides of the fandom of Wonder Woman would appreciate. I think she's going to have a sword. I think she's going to have a shield. And her demeanor will be like badass, you know, Amazon warrior from the Mascara and everything. However... That doesn't mean she's going to slaughter everyone. I think that's just going to be her presentation. She's going to be ready to go if you want to go. Uh, and the action will be served to us because I think there's going to, they're going to give us opportunities and scenes where, you know, <laughs> whoever she's trying to deal with isn't taking any other answer than for a fight. But that doesn't automatically mean, as I said, she's going to go into some situation where there's hostages and she's going to slaughter every single one of them and behead them. And like, I think James Gunn's just going to blend it long story long once again here. She's going to be badass warrior Wonder Woman, but also equipped with... Um, the the weapons of peace being that of compassion, but at the same time, if you want, if you want to, if you want to go, we're gonna go. <laughs> um, and I'm down for that. I really am. But yeah, I, I would completely understand complaints if she's like aggressive out of the gate. So up next from Arkham Raider for the absolutely needed thing in the DCU under the Red Hood. He's my favorite character and would make for a badass movie. The reason why I selected this one is because I do see it potentially being a thing. It's the kind of never say never thing. Of course, we have so much more to learn, but I think we can all land on the same page with how for Brave and the Bold, uh, long story short, attempting to do a long story short here, you can have Batman be in his mid thirties, not too much older than Superman. Um, I think that's what a lot of people want as well. Uh, even though I know there's plenty of you who want a kind of older Batman to reflect the Grant Morrison comics and the chronology of the Robins there. But if you want to make him a little bit younger, you can have him train Dick Grayson at like 27, 28 uh, for a shorter time than six years, maybe five, four and a half years. Maybe Jason dies after a year, a year and a half instead of two years. That way you can still fit in Tim Drake. That way Tim Drake is Robin uh, as Damian Wayne comes in. Barbara probably got trained around the same time he was training Dick Grayson for those first four and a half years in Batman Year 3. So what I'm trying to say is by the time we pick up with Superman Legacy and the Brave and the Bold, Jason can be presumed dead. Um, and I think that's what most fans would want. Please do disagree with me here if you if you think of an absolutely massively different idea. But I really do think, why not have Bruce be 34, 35 to 36? And at this point in time, because uh, it is a bit more of a condensed chronology of training as Robins to achieve that kind of younger Bruce Wayne age if you still want to kind of fit in a lot of the Robins he trained that is that's normally what I'm rolling with when I think of the brave and the bold I try and think of a way of fitting them in but yeah I mean why not like what I mean at that point like Bruce already kind of relinquished the idea of okay I don't think I'm gonna have a Robin again but Tim Drake kind of eventually got through and he's the current Robin Damien Wayne comes along but you know Jason is still presumed dead and I, I do think that undoubtedly, if the DCU is successful enough to just carry on and, you know, project after project, we go through chapter one and chapter two, uh, you would have another uh, Batman, you would, yeah, have another Superman project, but you would have another Batman project. And I think Under the Red Hood would be pretty damn crazy. A live action iteration of that would be insane. Now, again, it's still adaptations aren't copy and paste, so you could still do some new things with it. Uh, according to whatever Bruce in a DCU is dealing with at that time, the layout of Bat Family he's got at the time. But um, I think that would be fantastic. So please let me know if you disagree, but I don't see any reason why Jason can't be presumed dead. And, you know, for example, we've got 
probably Ra's al Ghul being involved in some way, shape, or form in Brave and the Bold, in my opinion, since we've got Damian Wayne, you know, the heir to the demon, or so Ra's al Ghul probably wants. That could be a massive part to the plot of the Brave and the Bold, since Damian's been dropped off on Batman's doorstep. Was that out of, like, I had to get away from my grandfather because he's floating around like freaking Voldemort, wanting to use my body as as his next host? I, I don't know. Like, did, did Talia finally ditch... Uh, Ra's al Ghul. There's so many ways you can go with this, but if Ra's al Ghul is still alive, maybe they could, you could argue he wants to bring Jason back. Not in the sense that he blames himself for Jason's death, as per like what a lot of you are probably familiar with, but I've always wondered if in the DCU, because of whatever happens in The Brave and the Bold, what if Ra's al Ghul to kind of like mess with Batman is like, I'm going to resurrect your Robin without you even knowing, just to kind of screw you, man. You know, you didn't want to be my uh, uh, my successor. You've now taken away my grandson, and he's no longer my successor. Now, I'm not saying he's taking Jason to be his successor, but I'm just saying, obviously, I don't think anyone in the Bat family, and Bruce included, would approve of Jason Todd being brought back through the Lazarus pit. But maybe Raz is, knows that, and he wants to bring Jason back and you could still adapt the story with the way Jason now sees everything and how everyone's just moved on and you, you do the somewhat under the Red Hood story. Now, some of you may hate that off the cuff idea I just kind of said there, but um, I need to stress to everyone, adaptations don't copy and paste. You can be, and I know I keep hammering that in, I, I know I really do, but it's so um, important to keep in mind and have your expectations set accordingly that for even really comic book accurate things that are most importantly handled well, written well as well, faithful to the actual core of the character, um, that you dart in maybe comic events, adaptations loosely of uh, certain things, but you innovate. And um, things would never be like we are going to adapt every panel in order of the comic book as it unfolds. So what I'm saying, you know, even if you hate the idea of what I just came up with, how Jason comes back for an Under the Red Hood storyline in the DCU because Raz resurrects him, uh, which has happened before, but obviously... Um, for a different reason, perhaps, because of Brave and the Bold and what unfolds there, it could be a little bit of a subplot that basically just ripples out into the future of the DCU for Batman's own personal story. Just know that it won't always go the way you know traditionally, super traditionalist from the story in the comic. It's like the MCU, right? Um, now, I don't know if that's a great example in every corner, but they've adapted a great story in those first 10 years that people beheld as this massive event with Endgame, Infinity War and whatnot. But it didn't happen exactly the way. Like, you know, it sticks quite closely in some ways, but it also innovates in many other areas to create this kind of new tapestry on in live action, that is, of what people knew and loved from the source material. Sometimes for the better, sometimes for the worst. That's the hard thing. You need to walk the line of what is innovative uh, and creative and not deviate. But yeah, I think Under the Red Hood can happen in an innovative way in the DCU. But let me know what you think. If you have any ideas, let me know. I would love to hear them because I don't know if I would necessarily say that this is like a mad top want from me. But like the more I think about it and I think, you know, uniquely with Tunnel Vision, like what do I want for Batman in the DCU? Again, I don't think it'd be one of my top DCU wants out of everything that I'm, you know, I want Green Arrow, I want a question series, I want all of these kinds of things. But yeah, like, I, you know, secretly on the side, I'm like, damn, I would love Under the Red Hood. We don't have to do it now. This could be like, I don't know, DCU year six, seven, eight, for all I know. But um, yeah, just expand and let me know your thoughts. Now here from Christian Yebro yeah, saying, I really want James Gunn to highlight the secret identity part of heroes' lives within the DCU and how it can affect them and affects the relationships they have with friends, family, etc. As for projects, uh, I'd really love uh, for a Jimmy Olsen show where he just goes around reporting on different events and we see David Corrinsway's Clark just vanish whenever there's crime. Now, I do think this will be something that has to be included, and I think, obviously, we're going to see that right out the gate with Superman Legacy. As James Gunn has said, Lois and Clark are the protagonists, as much as people don't want to believe that with all the, oh my god, it's overstuffed, oh, oh my god. So I think we're going to see Clark, and I'm so really dead ass excited to see like okay so is Lois dating him how far have they been dating if they are dating just because they're dating that doesn't mean that she knows Clark is the Superman she may have interviewed I don't know is the first interview with uh the Superman uh gonna be in the movie despite Superman having been active for like a year or two or three right 
Um, but what I'm trying to get down to there is without me rambling and gushing and fanboying over all of that, um, is that you're going to see Office Daily Planet reporter Clark Kent and probably what I would like to think is maybe Mr. Terrific and outside of the Mr. Terrific role. I don't know about Guy Gardner. We were going to have to wait and see there a Metamorpho, uh, Hawk Girl, but you'd have to, I think we are going to get into their civilian, you know, sides as well. I don't think we're always just going to see these metahuman compatriots, as as James Gunn puts it in the film, in their superhero attire. I think, you know, and what I like about doing these videos is I've not thought about that. Like, I feel like I would have thought about everything by now with the amount of videos I make. But again, what I love about this synergy we, we all have with this dialogue in these videos is that, oh yeah, I haven't actually thought about Hawk Girl, not in the Hawk Girl outfit, and actually maybe is she going to walk around with Clark Kent? Will he entrust his identity to these other superheroes? Or is it more strictly people he knows in the Superman side of himself and they don't actually know he's Clark Kent? Like, there's now this whole other world where I'm like, damn, I want to go away and think about that a bit more after this video. But no matter what, yeah, absolutely. You know, you know Bruce Wayne is obviously going to be something that has to be cracked a little bit more in the brave and the bold because after all his son is here um you know and and obviously while bruce has raised other robins so to speak that doesn't make him the best dad i mean after all dick grayson leaving and i think dick grayson would be handy for damien there for somebody to relate to a little bit but already i'm going a bit off track but my point is you're gonna have to like he's gonna have to reconcile with how he may have inadvertently built up this family. And I say, and you may be questioning, how does Bruce inadvertently set up the Bat family, right? He deliberately trained them. Yes, but maybe you're missing the point of what I'm saying. He's brought in Dick Grayson, Barbara maybe, Jason Todd, Tim Drake, with the intention of having a Robin, right? And he's never really been necessarily the greatest father figure up until then. But now where he has this Bat family surrounding him, a somewhat unforeseen side effect of that, if you will, to Bruce is like, whether he likes it or not, yes, through individually training for various different purposes, all of these Robins and Batgirls or, or whatever, he's now surrounded by a family of sorts. Do you, do you know what I mean? So that still blends and bleeds out into this whether he liked it or not, and maybe how whether how reluctant he is at the beginning, he needs to realize that he has these people who care about him now, as much as <laughs> they may have been pissed off at Bruce from time to time, and vice versa. There is a Bat family, so psychologically you could explore Bruce Wayne a lot in that fashion, and I think he will confront that a lot more, more than he ever has pr properly thought about it potentially, because his actual son is coming into the fold. Now, obviously you can translate that onto a lot of other heroes um it'd be really cool to think about this kind of lens on the lantern show you know outside of the investigation the true detective s comparisons gun has said for lanterns um you know are we going to see how jordan and john stewart outside the suits with the rings on but maybe having a beer at a bar trying to crack whatever they uncovered that day with regards to the ancient horror i don't know but you know also their families and outside of you know liaising with other lanterns in space from precinct earth uh, there's there's a lot that we can get into but i think gun knows and you know this is something that needs to be proven but something i keep always looking back on is everything he said on paper is pretty damn you know sounding sounding very damn good um and that is character emotion and i don't think believe it or not to a superhero the only thing about that character is the superhero absolutely not you know to batman you got bruce wayne to superman you got clark kent so with th this will absolutely for sure be getting explored and i actually want to thank you for making me think about this because it's not something i've thought about too much and now i'm like oh now i need to think about every single project in this lens but let me know what you guys can expand on here but yeah that's absolutely probably without me even having really thought about it too much before near the top of my list because character is all that really matters at the end of the day and showing the you know secret identity part to the hero's lives within the dcu is uh 100% should be in the top 10 list of priorities. Now up next from Eurodreamer1 saying we need John Constantine done right. As much as I enjoyed the Keanu Reeves movie, he's not very comic accurate. I know they're making a sequel, but Constantine is too crazy of a character to stay an Elseworlds project. It'd be so cool to see him playing a bigger role in the larger DC universe. Hopefully the Swamp Thing movie is the first step towards Constantine and the Justice League Dark eventually. And yes or no, before somebody says it, 
I know it's technically Constantine, but whenever I've said Constantine in videos before, people say it's Constantine, not Tyne. So I'm just saying it uh, kind of the most popular way. Just, just FYI there. But absolutely, uh, this is most definitely on my top 10 list. Um, John Constantine, I need him. That sounds a bit strange. I mean, for crying out loud, we're getting Anya Shalotra, who played Yennefer of Vengerberg, funnily enough, a magic user playing Cersei in Creature Commandos, one of Wonder Woman's villains. And, you know, she could technically, if she wanted to, cast a spell on Superman to make him go crazy at Wonder Woman, which has actually happened before. So we have magic. This is a fantastical DC universe. Please, James, don't make us wait too long for magic users outside of um, Anya Shalotra's Cersei and Creature Commandos, which I'm sure she'll get a live action appearance eventually, but I, I need more. Now, the only thing I'm a little bit worried about is James Mangold's comments about this, is that he has said, and I'm going to abbreviate here, he's like, I'm sure DC, James, DC Studios view this Warner Brothers as uh, a thing tied to a much larger franchise, which it is. It's literally a Swamp Thing movie in a connected DC universe, but he's looking at it as something kind of standalone. So I do think that is the way it will be approached. And by the way, I don't blame him for that. I think when you're making a movie, you should arguably, especially with James Gunn saying each movie will be very much so about that character, even though it will still be connected. Um, I think you have advantages to kind of having tunnel vision on your own character and your own movie. And Swamp Thing, from what Mangold has revealed, is his opportunity to do Frankenstein. He wants to have the movie pick up with Swamp Thing being Swamp Thing and him him being like, how did I become this? And then throughout the movie of what's been described thus far, he has these like kind of checkpoints of um, memory being like, oh, so that's how that happened. And this is how that, oh, so this is how I end up, ended up here. And it can be told through this really kind of horror, thriller, suspenseful kind of cool ass movie. And I really hope that they don't, sh like they better not shy away from the green. Like it's things like this I'm worried about, like truly the supernatural element and, um, you know, somewhat mystical forces of the DCU magic, the the elemental forces of the green. Um, you know, I don't they don't have to like go ham or go crazy into the rot. But I'm just a bit apprehensive that even though I'm happy enough with James Mangold tackling the project, I just I don't want I, I get what he's talking about with creating this monster movie and like who is Swamp Thing and this, you know, identity crisis of realizing what the heck happened to him. But don't neglect what this character can also open up. Now, I'm not saying that you have to have the responsibility of, oh, John Constantine's popping in. Oh, hello, Swampy. Oh, this is what happened to you, mate. All right, yeah, I'm Constantine. I can cast magic. And now Constantine's in the DCU. Well done, you've ticked that off your checklist. No, uh, I'm not asking for that either. But just don't make Swamp Thing in such a way where it just, I don't know, somehow shuts the door off anything like that. But we're going to have to wait and see. I, I don't know how we're going to get that door opened up unless they do announce a separate project. So like we obviously know that, as you're pointing out here, Swamp Thing could be the first steps towards Constantine and the Justice League Dark. But we just because there's a Swamp Thing movie, which may really just pretty much concentrate on Swamp Thing... Um, we could also get other projects like Constantine Greenland, do you know what I mean? In the DCU. I really hope that is the case, and I hope that the fact that there's an Elseworlds project being pursued doesn't mean that they're going to shy away from that. And, you know, of course, we've got proof that that doesn't have to be the case because, you know, you've got Matt Reeves' The Batman Part 2 and Part 3. Uh, hopefully part three, obviously, depending on how part two does. Um, and you've got DCU Batman, you know, so, so they're happening simultaneously. I think we should have a Constantine. And by the way, I do want to say that the preparation um, for Constantine's sequel with Keanu Reeves still needs to technically be greenlit. Um, you know, they're developing the script, but James Gunn still needs to sign off on if it hits the high caliber bar that they need to hit in order to actually have it signed off on. So I don't know. Um, but yeah, long story long again here. Uh, I need John Constantine in the DCU. To get Justice League Dark would be epic, but I don't know if we would actually get that. I think they want to world build a lot of other things. Maybe what I was saying earlier with a bit of Justice League International dabbed around here and there with Maxwell Lord, Booster Gold, see what's going on there. Batman being sprinkled in, maybe a world's finest situation, maybe the Trinity, maybe Justice League, but Justice League Dark, I, I, I don't know if they're going to go like full send into that until maybe like chapter two. So I hope it still happens. And if it doesn't happen for like the next five years, I still wouldn't worry because I still think it could happen. But yeah, I hope it absolutely does like, no matter what. Uh, so Raheem Jennings, 1397, says, The relationship between the Trinity needs to be done 
Right. And then we have another comment here from JD1776 saying the Justice League uh, done properly. I don't want to see some cobbled together team like we saw in the DCEU. Give each character a proper introduction before the team up. It doesn't have to be a full movie, but let them pop up in other projects before the team up so it doesn't feel so rushed. That would make the audience more invested in the characters. And if someone dies in the DCU, I want them to stay dead at least for a while. So I do agree. This is one thing I've been racking my brain with with regards to, okay, so how are these characters going to truly form? Um, should it start with a Trinity project first or like a world's finest, but then you have kind of a Trinity thing? Um, you know, and I completely agree with the way it was done in the DCEU. You don't want some kind of video file or, you know, introducing them that way. They're already out there or like Wonder Woman just comes in. You want that to kind of be a natural organic sense to it. So I do agree with building up to it, which is why I wouldn't mind. I think a lot of people can maybe agree with this. Instead of just going head over heels into the Justice League, maybe you can play around with how there are some familiarity, there is some familiarity between heroes out there. Like Batman's been doing this for probably at least 10 to 12 years. He, he's probably got tabs on Superman. He probably... I mean, this is Batman. He, he knows of other heroes out there. And this is something I need to remind everyone as well. Like, this this universe has been existing for a long time with metahumans and villains and superheroes. Like, way before um, the, the past 80 plus years. Probably since, for hundreds of years. But maybe the first official, you know, modern-ish recognized superhero team up that is in museums is the justice society in World War II or something. But, you know, they're really trying to spell to you that heroes exist and have existed for a long time. So I'm not discounting that maybe some League members know of each other, and this is why I think Justice League International could be a thing, because in this movie we've already got Superman knowing um, Mr. Terrific and other superheroes and popular ones at that out there, like Hawk Girl, Guy Gardner. People know these characters. They might not be your favorites, but you get what I'm trying to say. And that's why I think with that cooking in the background, you know, Maxwell Lord coming in, I do think you can do things like a world's finest between Batman and Superman. I'm just dying to know if they've met each other already. I'm really dying to know that. Really, 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 really dying to know because I feel like, and I play this clip all the time and you're probably seeing it on screen right now, you could kind of have this no, I don't know if I want to quite call it rivalry, and by all means, I'm not talking BVS type situation at all. Nothing like that, where Batman and Superman go at it. But there's this kind of like, eh, you know, situation happening, but then they just grow closer throughout it. Like, they, they might initially rub each other the wrong way, but then that's maybe what the world's finest movie will do. I mean, I don't know if Batman would be taking a case in Metropolis and Superman's like, eh? You know, I know who you are, and, you know, I've come across you before once or twice. I don't know what it will be, but that would be really cool. Um, as for Diana, I, I don't know, like, because James Gunn said that he's working on and has been working on getting a Wonder Woman animated series off the ground as soon as he came in as co-head of DC Studios. Now, is this going to be an Elseworlds project? I mean... Maybe, but like I doubt it. Like if you if you if you're coming in with a new DCU plan, I mean maybe it might be though, because why wouldn't you have put that as one of your announcements out of the twelve we've got so far? Like he he acknowledged that he's been trying to get one off the ground as soon as he came in, so surely that would have been one of the twelve, or should I say thirteen, if it is included, uh DCU projects. So but then again, I do feel like it'd be kind of weird to have Wonder Woman the new Wonder Woman introduced in animated format for such a big character because you could turn that around to me and say, but what about the Creature Commandos, you know? You've got um, Rick Flagg Sr., played by Frank Grillo, like, you know, introduced that way, or Cersei, played by Anya Shalotra. I, I mean, I get what you're saying, and they could have those live-action appearances in the future, because that's the point. They're canon, uh, these animated shows uh, and whatnot, to live-action appearances as well. But this is Wonder Woman we're talking about. You would have expected a actual live action appearance even though that same actor will be voicing them in let's just say the wonder woman tv show so i can't really decide if that's going to be um elseworlds or like actually a dcu project but it's a bit of a weird conundrum in a sense that they have because i think people really want the justice league unlimited as gunn has even said it's inspired by that show and same with young justice they want the justice league but you also don't want to rush to it so you know, you, you need to do it properly, you need to organically build to these characters, and that might still take a handful of years. I think there's two avenues if we put it on the table right in front of us that they can go down. They can organically build to a Justice League team up. This involves doing things like obviously seeing Superman Legacy, maybe cooking up 
other metahuman compatriots, if you will, already familiar with each other, maybe going down uh, the Justice League International path with a few heroes, all while doing movies uh, and projects like World's Finest, get Diana involved maybe with certain things, maybe a Trinity thing, I don't know. And eventually you have an organically built up over four to six years Justice League familiarity between these heroes, Superman and his metahuman compatriots, right? Uh, or you can do it with a similar plan to that in option two and avenue two that I see in where that's still kind of the plan in a way as per what I just said. However, certain heroes have indeed actually already met each other before. So for example, Clark likely already knows Mr. Terrific and Guy Gardner. As Gunn said, how can I tell a story about Superman and Clark, but a Superman story without telling also the side of his superhero life, Superman life, and you can't do that without his metahuman compatriots. So I completely understand why we've got a whole girl Guy Gardner in it, but he let's just say he's familiar with them for the sake of this example. He could already be familiar with Bruce Wayne's Batman. Do you know what I mean? Um, they could, as a trio, already be familiar, um, you know, as Diana, Batman, and Superman. They might not have done a shite ton of things, but do you see what I mean? Just because Superman's been active for two or three years, it doesn't mean that they've had a bunch of time together and they're, they're like the Trinity as we know them. But just like how Superman's got to work with Hawkgo and stuff, flying around for a few years, especially Batman being Batman, I... I wouldn't rule out that they maybe already know each other in some way, shape, or form. It's just there hasn't been the legendary league set up, the Hall of Justice set up just yet. Do you know what I mean? That could be another way of going about it. I already can foretell some people would be like, oh, I don't know about that because then we're missing out on the history and the origin of how it came to be. But I think that would maybe be a happy compromise for those who want to see the Justice League which it would still take a few years maybe to get to, but without waiting six years to organically build it up, it would also mean you don't have to rush in and do it and establish all of this, getting how did they know each other within one movie like BVS did kind of thing. And you're kind of like, okay, this is still going to take place over a few years. Maybe you mentioned Superman Legacy or The Authority or maybe even Brave and the Bold that Batman knows of Superman and maybe they've met once or twice or I helped him out with this one thing or like, oh yeah, I know Supes. Uh, we started off on the wrong foot akin to the clips that maybe I'm showing on screen right now but we're all good i mean i don't think bruce would talk that way but you know what i mean so it would just show that they have familiarity that's all i'm saying there's this some more kind of social media in a in a weird sense in their heads this is such a weird example i'm giving of where if you're a superhero and you've earned your name as a superhero to some extent you know roughly who other superheroes are and you may have had run-ins with them so i would like to see maybe some of these heroes having walked or crossed paths and that can happen, especially when Superman flies around. Diana is Diana, after all, lanterns are lanterns. So in terms of like the racetrack being this long, we're kind of like this far along, but you still got like all this direction to go. So people might be familiar with each other a little bit, and that way it can shortcut a little bit of what I was saying in that first example of maybe taking multiple, multiple, multiple years to get to that point, and done in a very well-written way, Put it in subtly that, hey, here's a line, there's a line, here's a line of some heroes knowing each other already. Now, whether that being Batman and Superman, and maybe they've had a brief encounter before, you don't have to go too far into it. Again, it could be the case of this isn't the movie for that because this is a movie called Superman Legacy and it's about these characters, but you could still drop in the kind of hint that he's had encounters with this person from Gotham kind of thing. That would be a way to shortcut it. And I know I've been kind of rambling quite a lot about this one, but... I would love to know what you think. I think the Trinity does need to be done right. And if that means taking a, quite a while to get there uh, and to get to a kind of fully established united front and, you know, beacon of hope that maybe Superman will establish with Superman legacy and catching the attention of other heroes like Batman and they only just meet each other for the first time, then so be it. It might take several, several, several years to get there. But if... You kind of want to do half of that route, but with these heroes already knowing each other to some extent more than others. And you kind of just have the rapport already built between these characters when they meet for the first time. Or maybe they just get to know each other a little bit better. Then I would be okay, I think, with that as well. It's just it would need to be written really well for us to believe that. Okay, so this actor is meant to pretend that he's known this actor for this amount of time already. And we need to believe that. I mean, they're actors. But we need to believe that these characters have had maybe an adventure before. Maybe Superman, for example, 
could have flown into Gotham um, because something crazy was happening, but Batman was on the scene as well. There's easy kind of ways they could implement familiarity, but it's so important that they do that right if they're already saying that there's a context and history behind some of these characters. It's the same argument some people have for already starting off with a um, already somewhat constructed Bat family around Bruce. Some people are a bit salty and understandably about, oh, so we're going to miss out on Dick Grayson's Robin days. We're going to miss out on Jason Todd dying, potentially. We're going to miss out on maybe Barbara becoming Oracle, the killing joke or whatever, right? I get it. I do. But I do also find it attractive in the sense that we're also hitting the ground running in, in this kind of already existing dynamic. And we've normally, albeit we haven't seen Dick Grayson go to Nightwing um, in the Bat family, Batman movie sense before. But I, I do kind of like already just being at this point of his life because Ben Affleck's Batman wasn't quite like that. His Robin died, you know, he was by himself. This time we're actually getting kind of the comic book Batman. We don't have to take 10 plus years to get up to that point of where he's got a Bat family around him. We're starting already with like it, it already flourishing. That's really cool to me. I get both sides, but I'm down for this hitting the ground running approach of the DCU. So let me know how you would tackle the Trinity and the Justice League being built up to. And I wish I said this a second ago. Uh, the next question after this was from Big Shack 1029 saying, I really want to see a Batman and Superman building up their relationship as best friends throughout all the projects. Then, by the end of Chapter 2, a Public Enemies movie. Now... So yeah, you somewhat echoed like the building up aspect there. Again, guys, expand on that one. But yeah, I, the public enemies thing, you know, it. That, that, who knows? Like, because one thing I want to say, because with regards to public enemies, of course, um, you know, Luther basically is, it could be powerful in this DCU in so many ways. Like Holtz Luther can be so formidable, even as obviously a mere mortal to Superman. And because that's after all who Lex Luthor is. And I can't wait, wait to see how they tackle that in the DCU. Because in that story, after all, Lex was president and uh, he basically, you, and this has been a theory for the DCU anyway, the, the, the government had enlisted and recruited heroes Basically, they were employees of the government, and I think this ranged from, like, uh, Black Lightning to Starfire to Captain Atom, and they they framed Superman, well, not all of them, Lex Luthor framed Superman for murder, and I, you know, it, when, when thinking about that, now you're mentioning public enemies, it's just making me think, okay... With how salty, like, because I can really see Nicholas Holt's Lex Luthor, like, I, I really can. What's a way that he can try and drag down Superman and maybe what what he might be trying to bring about change in the world? Because, you know, there's all of, all of these rumors of how the engineer right now, of whom is an authority member in Superman Legacy, the team itself won't be in Superman Legacy because for all we know, the team might not exist. Like the engineer by the ending events of Superman Legacy will go on to create the authority team for all we know. Like we, we really don't know right now, but there's a lot of ideas in a public enemy sense that what if she is hired or like, you know, there are certain heroes in a world where heroes have existed for a long time. And that's what the DCU is. The government is no stranger to metahumans. And that's why, obviously, they may, they may be a bit panicked by this, um, you know, person they can't control, like Superman. So, in an Amanda Waller sense, and who knows what Waller is going to get into, there might be measures of certain metahumans that are recruited, and probably Luther might have. So it depends how political they're going to go with him. But it just wouldn't surprise me if the engineer, at least initially, even though some people would argue that this is against the kind of what the authority would even do in the first place. But again, that could be the catalyst for what fractures the engineer off to go form the authority. But through perhaps initially being enlisted, not like a Task Force X thing or anything like that, but you know what I mean. Um, that's how her and Superman brush up the wrong kind of way in the movie. But maybe Luther has something to do with that. Maybe eventually he's going to try and frame something on Superman as well. We're going to have to wait and see. Um, but I kind of went off on a mass massive tangent there. Of course, as uh, you're saying here, this could be built up to long in the future for an actual public enemy's esque influenced storyline but i think that they can grab influences from that right out the gate like honestly like government regulated heroes if you will maybe that's what's happened since world war ii justice society days like now in the 2020s when clark is around a lot of them are there's this attempt to be regulated maybe luther is really 
you know, rallying for that and maybe getting a lot of people in the public. Because I can, and this is where of a lot of the, um, you know, I say this reverse kingdom come situation. There are these political undertones of which you would think about in a superhero world. Like, think about it. Some people wouldn't be happy with soups or metas, you know, running around with the power to do anything. And I think that could, it's kind of hard to ignore that if you do a plot, if you do a Superman movie in, and also it being your first movie in a new DC universe, with a universe that has already been ticking for a while with some history of heroes. Again, for example, Batman having been Batman for 10 years, heroes having been heroes for a long time. So it makes you think, yeah, what is the status quo? So I wouldn't say that's exactly at the very tip top of my list, but I would say it's fairly important for the story to address what the current perception on heroes is. And I think for me, this is almost like a guarantee in some way, shape or form, whether that's my theories of a reverse kingdom come thing where heroes have been rampant for a while and Superman's going to try and rein that in and be this new influence, whether there's already somewhat government, you know, regulated heroes, those appointed to kind of be their hounds, but maybe they break free and realize that they should have never have done that in the first place. And that's where the engineer comes in and maybe some other heroes. I don't know, but it could get very, very interesting. And I do expect that on some kind of level. And Superman could be the big red flag for a lot of officials out there. Up next from Buster Barnes, we need villains to be built up. I'm sick of seeing superhero movies where the villain makes their first appearance and then dies in the same movie. Adding on to this, I hope that we see the Legion of Doom. With most of the antagonists being introduced before the team up movie, love the content by the way, thank you. And I completely agree, I made a video not so long ago, check it out. If you haven't seen it already, I go over the top eight uh, potential big bads the DCU could actually go for, whether that's in chapter one, chapter two, and Legion of Doom was one of them. And absolutely needs to be built up to. One thing I detest as well, and I think Gunn would, I, I mean, I don't know the guy, but from everything he said, I think he would probably agree. Seeing a villain introduced in the, in the movie or whatever it is in the project, and then die by the end of it and not kind of, I don't know, be just caught, captured, um, and I don't know, tossed in, Blackgate, Arkham, whatever it is, I, I can't stand it when they die. And let's just say that was cloned onto so many DCU projects where a villain's brought in, a villain's brought in, a villain's brought in, and then they die, 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 die. And let's just say this is like some big characters and villains that we love. I would, I would, that would really be a big pet peeve of mine because I'm not saying they have to come back. Um, but at least it gives you the comic book somewhat explanation. And this is one of the things where I don't see why you should stray away from the comic books in this one, where just capture the villain, put them away, whether it's in the metahuman holding cell or something like that. And at least that way you have the ability to incorporate them in a story later on, whether that's just for like some kind of interview or like liaising with them, whether they break out again, maybe they get put away and they uh, join the Legion of Doom later on. I just, I, I would, I would really be disappointed if for a good example would be like Cersei, right? She's introduced in Creature Commandos and let's just say she dies in Creature Commandos. I'd be like, wait, what? How could you do that? Or like, let's just say she does come into live action and then she dies. I just feel like there's more you can do with that character over like a 10 plus year DCU story. And there's probably even better examples I'm not even thinking about right now. But like Lex Luthor, Nicholas Holt, obviously isn't going to be brought into Superman Legacy and then die by the end of Superman Legacy. That would be... Oh my god, that would be the biggest shooting yourself in the foot I, I would have probably ever, ever seen. But for example, Brave and the Bold, I, I'm not that Batman kills, but my point is, please don't in Brave and the Bold bring in like some rogues gallery villain and then Damien just kills them or something like that. Just don't, no, because then forevermore you don't get Clayface. I, I don't know. You guys get the point by now. Buster Barnes, I am 1010% with you there. Don't introduce them and then don't kill them by the end of it. Like, I'm not saying a villain can't die, by the way, but more often than not, it's very unnecessary when it happens. Up next from Alex Walker 9593 saying, Wally West, no explanation needed. And I've got a bunch from you guys wanting Wally West here. Now, now from where I stand, it is it is hard because I don't think you are going to necessarily get a Flash solo project after the, how the Flash did. And that can be due to a, a variety of reasons. And I can't guarantee this, but 
since that movie flopped, maybe, you know, you could argue that the general audience might think, oh, The Flash, am I really going to go and walk in to see another Flash project in the DCU in the next three to four years' time? Maybe not, right? You can kind of understand from a brand perspective, they might not want to go head over heels into that, even maybe with a different Flash. That's the thing. But I wouldn't discount a Flash at all in the DCU. And yeah, maybe that should be Wally, uh, because even though you're getting a lot of recastings in the DCU, so you could arguably say uh, there's a new Barry and it's not Ezra Miller. Um, maybe they also want to differentiate it by still not being Barry, even though it's a diff they could have gone with a different actor and they just want to go with a different Flash. Especially for a DCU, as I've said a billion times before, and where heroes exist and have existed. So maybe Barry has been going around with Bruce for like... 10 years? Well, maybe not 10 years, but you know what I mean. Maybe some characters, as I also pointed out, are familiar with each other. And Barry, they've been through something already. And Wally is now uh, a Flash. I don't know. Like, that's another rabbit hole I could get down. Um, now, for me, I am very biased. Like, I, I, if we did get a Flash in the DCU, I still really want to see the reverse Flash play out on in live action on the big movie screen. Um, but then again, I wouldn't be remotely salty at all if we if we got Wally. You know, there's still uh, Hunter Zolom on there, Zoom, and, and they could get into some crazy, crazy things. So I do think we're going to get a Flash. Maybe that could be introduced through something like the Teen Titans. Maybe he's not going to be a much, much older Wally West. It could happen like that. And maybe it's going to be he's going to be introduced through another DCU project that isn't just called The Flash. Do you know what I mean? I think it would happen that way rather than there being a dedicated DCU Flash project, even if it's Wally West. But let me know if you disagree there um, and how you think they could bring in Wally or maybe even Barry. But ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to have to end it here. I've kept this video going for quite a while. And unfortunately, as usual, I didn't get through nearly as many screenshots as I wanted to. I've got tons more literally saved to my folder, like tons. And then there was still tons more I could have taken screenshots of on the community post. So what I'm going to do is more episodes of the top 10 well not top 10 but top ones for the dcu um because there's so many and i really enjoyed making this because you know just knowing that this is what people really want to see obviously we're only really going to be talking about the most desired things for the upcoming dcu and that's always exciting so let me know your thoughts on everything we discussed in today's video please consider leaving a like especially if you got this far it just helps boost this video out there a little bit more and double check triple check if you've been enjoying my videos if you're subscribed because you might think you are but you might not be sometimes youtube is a bit like that uh, but until next time ladies and gentlemen again thank you so much for your time today i hope you have a lovely rest of your day and i'll see you people of the DCU in the next video. Goodbye.